what's on my desk today? Well, a question from one of you, which I thought was such a great question because I talk about this topic quite a bit in my readings, in my sessions with you guys. This is one of the things I look at in a lot of detail. The question was, hello, can you do a video on planet maturity and what events may occur at those times of one's life? Absolutely. Great question, as I say, because I cover this in depth in my readings. Now, what we're going to do today is I've got handwritten notes and we're going to look from Mars maturation onwards. So that's age 28 and onwards. I know there are maturation points that occur before 28. If you would like, I can do a video about those. I will need to do some homework on those. These notes, I can just do this off the top of my head because this is something that 28 onwards uh, I look at for every single one of my clients. This is something that I yeah, have a lot of practical hands-on experience with this. What I'll do is I'll put on the screen by my side the maturation points that we're going to cover today. And I'm going to include as well Saturn return and I'm going to include the nodal return points as well okay so you'll see these are the points I look at in a lot of detail just out of interest as well you might be interested to know that the bulk of the people who come for a reading with me they are around the 36 37 mark very typical I get a lot of people there or approaching that or they've just come out of that and I get a lot of people approaching 42 to 48 that is where the bulk of my people are. So they're approaching 42 uh, to 48. I get a lot of people there. And yes, I do definitely get people come around 55, the 55 mark. And I've done quite a few second Saturn return readings as well, where Saturn and Jupiter are returning. So that's age 59. And I have done some readings as well at 74. Uh, that is pretty key as well when I get someone who say for example they're in their early 20s that for me is rare I don't have that many people come uh, at that age isn't that interesting and do I read for children yes I do with children I will read for a child if I've read for a parent first so I need to have read for a parent first then I will uh, be able to read for children. All right, so where do we begin? Let's begin with Mars maturation. That's 28 years of age. So what are the things that are typically happening? By the way, before I delve into each one of these one at a time, I just want to give a generic overview as to what types of events do I see happening at maturation points? Well, at maturation points, and this can be at a maturation point or even at the start of a Mahadasha as well. What I'm looking at is I'm looking at the start of a new chapter and that could be the start of a new Mahadasha. I'll put the Mahadashas on the screen as well so that you can see how long they go for. Uh, so if someone's either at the start of a new Mahadasha or they're at a planetary maturation point or they're at some kind of nodal return point or Saturn return point, right? These are some of the things that I will see. So the first one is, and I'll be really generic and abstract here and just say that it is a shift of power. So there's something about like the voltage of power that is running your life is going to change and how that will express in the 3D material world is that you will see that you will change jobs, you will change location, you might change your appearance in a significant way as well. Uh, you might change relationships, a relationship might end, a relationship might begin, you know, a very significant relationship. You might also find that a psychic gift will open up for you. So this is some kind of gift that you have honed perhaps over many lifetimes that will open up for you so this can be a fully formed psychic gift and I'll give you the example of Michaela Sheldon she is a brilliant one now I don't know when her psychic gift opened up but 
her story of how that happened for her really indicates that it happened at one of these key points in time. Um, for me, it was age 36 when my Saturn matured that I was able to even kind of touch Vedic astrology, you know, and you could imagine that, that how, how was, you know, how did my guides and angels prevent me from touching Vedic astrology? Considering I grew up in a household where my dad, he knew how to draw Vedic astrology charts and he did draw them with his own hands, you know, like so... But yet it was that, yeah, I, you know, and it was interesting because, uh, you know, in the family, they did get the chart done for my brother. I always used to wonder, why did they never get a chart done for me? Apparently the letter got lost on its way to the astrologer. So isn't that interesting? And I don't think it was lost at all. I think, you know, I was being kind of shielded from that world because I had to experience my Jupiter Mahadasha first. I had to grow spiritually first it was like the angels had a particular curriculum for me and it had to go in that order so you'll find that psychic gifts may open up um, there are also other just life-changing events your life will change or it will look radically different another not so great example i have of this this is actually quite a quite quite a sad example um, i was thinking about the chart of christopher reeve Christopher Reeve, the actor who played Superman. Now, if you remember, he had a horrible accident that left him quite paralyzed. And um, when I was studying his chart, uh, firstly, one of the things they talk about is this Superman curse. They say that people who play Superman, there's always something that goes wrong in their life. You know, and one of the things I observed was that his Rahu was in the eighth house in both D10 and D9, I'll just have a look. Is it anywhere else? And what happened with him is that uh, when he had his accident, I remember when I was studying this, something in my intuition told me, oh, his Rahu got initiated. And when we have a look at the year of the accident, uh, I think he was 42 or 43 years old, right? His Rahu matured and he had that that awful accident because Rahu, of course, is in the eighth house. Now, I've got a lot of clients, a lot of you out there, you've got your Rahu in the eighth house. Is that a problem? Does it mean there's going to be uh, some kind of catastrophe? No, not at all. I know that eighth house means accidents and things like that, but I have read for so many people now who've got their Rahu in either Scorpio or eighth house, and it's not that some accident or bad thing befalls them. No, a lot of these people end up as healers a lot of these people end up you know helping uh people who who have these yeah kind of traumatic things so a lot of people who come to me they got rahu in the eighth or rahu in scorpio they'll be starting up a healing practice or you know um definitely psychic gifts are opening up for them definitely right so th that's just an overview of what are the kind of things that i see happening at these points so let's take a look at each one in turn i'll try to go quickly i want to make these videos short but this one's going to be a long video because there is quite a lot to get through so that's okay uh, now mars matures at 28 so what you'll find at 28 years of age is that you will have to reintegrate a healthy sense of aggression into your life so i've talked about this on the channel before when i talked about the chart of prince harry and I talked about how I think he's 40 odd or something like that. And he's reintegrating his sense of aggression only now. You know, that's work that really should have been done ideally at age 28. And where this gets tested is it gets tested in relationships, especially love relationships. It gets tested a lot at work. So you will have confrontations with the bosses. You will have, you know, and, and some of you at, at 28, you're being approved and applauded and promoted and you know some some people are having a good mars maturation right but some people at mars maturation they're coming up against some kind of a ceiling they're coming up against some kind of you know yeah it feels like everything's against me uh you have to stand up for yourself and definitely either in love relationships or at work this kind of thing is, is presenting itself saturn returns at 29 so look at that. You, your Mars has just 
matured and then you've got a Saturn return where Saturn is actively pressing the weak links in your life he wants to see what you know what what is weak and has to go right so Saturn can be being very difficult now if your Saturn is retrograding on your natal Saturn you could get two or three hits by Saturn over a period of several months there when you turn 29 that can be very difficult now Saturn matures at age 36 so that is you know and, and for me my personal example of that is yeah Vedic astrology cracked open as a thing for me I got one Vedic astrology reading done I was told you should start reading charts I thought okay and then off I go you know I spent the whole year at 36 I remember I spent every day reading book after book after book it just opened up and then I'm pretty sure yeah 37 38 I started to read for other people so 37 is your nodal return okay so you will close out a cycle that you began at age 18 and for me that looked like me closing out the career I began uh, at age 18 which was really a corporate kind of a thing that I was doing so at 37 that closed out for me now when I've read for a lot of clients out there what have I typically seen at this time well definitely for women this is a time 36 37 where they're having children and they are a mum, you know and yeah and and life is no longer the same you know, so they're, they're closing out that single lady chapter from 18 to 36. Well, maybe they're married before 36, but they're having the babies definitely 36 and 37. That's that's I've seen that a lot. Uh, now, Rahu matures at age 42. The other thing is with women, and especially, you know, 42 as well, the 42 to 48 time, you know, some, some women are having children in here as well. So Rahu matures age 42. Uh, and what are some of the things I've seen here? So I mentioned that famous example there with, with Christopher Reeve, you know, um, that initiated a very new kind of a, a life for him. Uh, one of the things I've seen with Rahu maturing is that you will be given an opportunity. You will be given an opportunity that takes you out of your comfort zone. You will need courage to take this opportunity on. And if you do it, that's great. That will initiate the next phase of your life. So sometimes for some people, it can, I've even seen this as education. Sometimes people are being asked to start a degree in the field that they really want to study at the moment. So I know one guy who was offered pilot training at this time. Uh, I know someone else who I think she decided to become a psychiatrist at this time. So sometimes you are stepping out of your comfort zone and you are, you know, taking up a completely new line of study. I have seen that as well. That can really happen here at 42. If you're on track, if you're quite on track, you are in that Rahu house because maybe there are some things that happened before 42 that really put you in that Rahu house. What you will notice in the Rahu house is not so much an opportunity that's asking you to be courageous, but it will be it will be a shedding of something. You will discover that things that used to bother you don't bother you anymore. And I have seen this in my clients' lives where they go home to the family home and things that used to really trigger them don't, don't bother them anymore at all. So I've seen that happen. And that especially applies if you're on the spiritual path and you're doing your work, you will see that things that used to be bothersome are just not bothersome at all. Now, Keta matures age 48. And this can be a time where cycles close out. This can definitely be a time where past life gifts crack open for you as well. So you might find a psychic gift comes online, uh, some talent that you didn't know you had that you've actually honed in past lifetimes or future lifetimes, just other lifetimes. You've done this before, right? But it's going to initiate and crack open for you at this time. The other thing to bear in mind with a key to maturing age 48 is that a lot of people at this time, as per human design, if they run a six line, they're turning 50 at about that time and they're coming down off the roof. 
and they are going to be re-immersing themselves into the world in order to lead or in order to do some significant thing. So key to maturation can be pretty profound, okay, especially if you run a six line as per your human design. Now, there's a nodal return that happens at 55. And some of the things I've seen here are that people are, I've seen people having to move at about 55. So I've definitely seen people moving. I've seen people retiring at this time. Uh, I have also seen people retiring. I've also had bookings by people who are, say, for example, 74. So the nodal return afterwards, they're actually retiring at that time. So I've seen that as well. But sometimes this can be a time at 55 where people are retiring or maybe you are changing career. You could be changing career to, again, at this point at 55, start what you really want to do. Okay. So you could be starting a new career here as well at 55. Now, Saturn and Jupiter are returning uh, at 59 okay this is your second Saturn return and Jupiter returns at the same time and that's really significant because both of these planets are looking to set you up for a brand new 30-year cycle and Saturn's looking to set you up structurally and Jupiter's looking to set you up financially both of these planets want to make sure that you're going to enjoy another 30 years you know, around the wheel kind of thing. I think I, I tend to think a great life gets three spins of the wheel. And in tarot, we have that wheel of um, wheel of fortune or the wheel of life or something. I tend to see that wheel as being 30 years long. And then, as I said, we've got nodal return happening at 74. So, yeah, that's, that's, um, that's a point there where your nodes will return again. And this can be retirement. This can be moving. This can be, I mean, this can be the start of a new career as well. I don't see why not. I mean, but a different type of career. This could be, you know, where you decide to write your memoirs or you want to write a book or you want to uh, engage in your art or, you know, you want to I don't know, learn a new musical instrument or something. I mean, yes, yeah, it's, it's new things that we can always be enjoying. But I'm pretty sure I've covered all of my notes there. Um, let me see, can I think of anything else? Well, it's important to know these years. Okay, so it's really important to know. The, well, another thing I have seen, which is really cool when I see this, is that there'll be like a maturation point and the start of a new Mahadasha. That's always really exciting. That does happen a lot. I mean, for me, I kind of had that. I sort of had my Saturn mature and then my nodal return happen. And then my Saturn Mahadasha opened. It was all very, very close. And it's really incredible, actually, because when I was, thank God for astrology, otherwise I would have been depressed because all of my work in the corporate field was just drying up. And I was thinking, oh no, what's going on here? That's bad. Like I, I didn't want it to end, uh, but it was all ending. And um, yeah, that, that whole thing was really interesting because even though I was studying astrology and I knew what I was going through and I could see it, I'm looking around at my actual life and I'm going, nothing's changing. I like, it all looks the same. It's like, uh, you know, everything is the same. And I was just reading all these astrology books thinking that, well, I'm just going to read all these books, but then I'm going to go and get some job or something. I don't know. And yeah, it's interesting because that time in my life, I needed to live a few years and then look back. And in the looking back, I can see, oh, my God, that is when my whole life changed. It really was 36. And definitely when I got that reading and then I started reading all these Vedic astrology books and then I do, you know, my first reading, which again, that was incredible how that came through to me. And that, that was such an amazing thing. Um, another story for another time. But and the encouragement I got from that, like there's so many things that happened there. But yeah, this, this, this thing cracked open, this ability to read charts. And then, um, and, you know, I can, I, I can read the charts for other people. I'm not so good at reading it for myself, you know. So I think that's when maybe, you know, you have something. I don't know. But, 
yeah that period in my life was one where while I was in it I couldn't see anything I needed some years much more into the future and then I look back and I go wow that is really when my whole life changed so with some of these points you can be in it and your whole life really is changing but you won't be able to see it or you won't feel it or you won't know like I genuinely didn't know that my whole life was changing and that a very big new path was uh, opening well it might be a big new path it might be small I don't know but yeah the other thing is in conversation with people, look out for when people talk and they say things like, uh, so this guy said something about, oh, I, I, I took two and a half years to do this painting. Oh, he did it in a Saturn transit, right? Straight away, you can see the astrology. People speak astrology all the time. You know, um, I was listening to someone talk about some high profile person and they said her marriage was 15 years long. And I knew, oh, okay, because they mentioned all her career and all her different things. And I knew that, okay, she got definitely the marriage happened between 36 and 55 and things like that. And when I looked it up later, sure enough, that was correct. So another example, I'll just leave you with very quickly. I know I try to, I want to make these videos shorter, but anyway. Um, yeah, so our neighbor in Australia, she was selling her house and I predicted that if she sells between, I think it was April to, I think it was July, because Saturn had dipped his toe into Aquarius. And I knew that if she sells at that time, then she'll stay in the house. She'll likely move physically at the start of next year, I had said. And the other thing I figured out was that I think she'd lived in that house for something like 25 years. And she looks really, really young. We didn't know her age. But I said, I think she's 60 or she's 59, something like that. And when we looked back in the calendar to see, because she had invited, I think, everyone on the street to her 50th um, birthday, yeah, we were able to calculate she is indeed 60. So even without seeing someone's chart or even knowing how old they are <laughs> you can kind of start to work things out about people uh, knowing these years and how, yeah how these things work is, is really quite incredible so I hope this has been a good video for you let me know in the comments how you got on with the content here and let me know what happened for you during these maturation points I'd be really interested to know if you've got some great stories uh, especially about the Mars maturation you know but any of these points really or any of these Mahadasha points as well uh, let us know in the comments below it would be fascinating to hear your stories all right well thank you so much and I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.